I've been struggling with my throat. I hope my voice doesn't give up. And if anything, I think it will be a shorter homily. Hopefully no one will complain, right? Last evening, we had the uh, wedding of our youth minister. And I was privileged enough to have the, the wedding. And we went to the reception. And uh, someone said to me, Oh, Father, you're struggling with your throat. Have a tequila shot. No help. <laughs> and so... <clears throat> And so I, I took it, and it did help them, but now it's too early to take one, so I can't, I can't take one. Uh, have you ever gone to a store and then, or to anywhere, and you see someone that you know and you recognize, but you were not expecting to see them, and all of a sudden you're trying to fish for their name, but it, the name just doesn't come up? Have you ever experienced that? Uh, I've, I've experienced that quite a bit, and then some people say, Father, just wait. Like, as you get older, the more that happens to you. I was like, oh man, it's going to be good. But if we were to flip that coin on the other side, if we were to be the one that people can't think of your name. I've been praying and meditating about this. I wonder when people see me or see any of us, and they can't really come up with their names, I wonder how many people would say, oh, that's Jesus. Because he or she acts like him. He or she walks like him. He or she serves and sacrifices like him. I wonder how many people would think that of us. Because in today's gospel, Jesus is saying that people will come to know that we are His disciples by how we love, by the love that we have, and how we imitate and sacrifice like Jesus does for us. And one can ask ourselves, how, how, do, how does Jesus sacrifice for us? I think that the first line of the gospel today gives us a great insight to that. When the gospel started by saying that Judas had left the room or had left him. And this is when Ju Judas goes and betrays Jesus. Judas goes and turns in Jesus into the authority so that they can come and apprehend him and put him to suffering and pain and all his passion that he endured for us. And as soon as Judas left, Jesus says, now is the Son of Man glorified. So Jesus is seeing an opportunity of suffering as an opportunity to glorify his Father. So Jesus is transforming an opportunity of suffering, of giving himself into that suffering, to love us and to be with us so that you and I can spend the rest of eternity with Him in heaven. So what a powerful um, opportunity that Jesus is giving us and He's asking us to imitate and love in the same way. Every time we look at the cross, we see Jesus' sacrifice. We see Jesus' selfless love for each one of us. We see Jesus' total surrender of His will to the Father's will. That the Father loved Him so much. The Father loved the Son so much that He asked Him to sacrifice for you and for me. What a marvelous sacrifice. And Jesus, with no hesitation, said yes, embraced it, and died for us. This is the same love that Jesus is asking us to have for one another. This is the same love, the same selfless love that Jesus is asking us to have and serve and sacrifice for one another. This is the same opportunity that the Lord gives us through every single suffering that we have, every single struggle, every single pain. I think that there is no one in this world that doesn't suffer. We all suffer from one way or another, whether it's physical, emotional, spiritual, whatever it is. We all have certain pains, certain sufferings that we go through. And the Lord is asking us not to run away from those sufferings. But it is through those sufferings that the Lord wants to encounter us. That the Lord wants to love us. That the Lord wants to be there for us. In the first reading, St. Paul reminded his community, a community that, that was being oppressed and that was under a lot of suffering. He said to them, It is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. It is necessary for us to go under many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. I'm afraid that a lot of times we just kind of seem to forget that. We kind of seem to forget that in order to, to get there with our Heavenly Father in heaven, this is not a nice, comfortable ride. That in order for us to be there, that it is true that our salvation has already been won by Christ. It is true that Jesus has already died for us. But it is also true that we have to die to ourselves to say yes to the Lord and to walk with Him. We have to embrace our own sufferings and our own pains. Not for the sake of suffering, but for the sake of encountering our Lord in the midst of that. 
for the sake of walking with our Lord and seeing our Lord and being there. Jesus also said that no servant is greater than his master. And so if our master, our Lord Jesus, died and suffered for us, it is the same path that we have to call, that we are called to follow and to imitate, to suffer and die for those that are around us, especially for our family members, whom at times we have the hardest difficulty with. We call to die, die to ourselves. And the second reading, John reminded us that God has made his dwelling in our midst with a human race. Every time we gather to celebrate the Holy Mass, the heavens open up and the heavens break through the earth and the Lord comes and makes his dwelling in us. And he makes himself present in the Eucharist. John went on to say that God himself will always be with us. He will wipe away every tear from our eyes. If you've noticed, this is the second Sunday in a row that John says that to us. God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. And it is because God knows how difficult it is to suffer, how difficult it is to love and serve sacrificially. God knows that this is not an easy task. And He knows that without His help, we will not be able to do this. This is why God makes His dwelling in us. To help us. To encourage us. And to carry us forward. When our own strength just gives up. Someone said that our lives are like one big billboard. That we're always advertising or promoting something with, with our life, with how we live. I wonder that when people see us, what do people really see? Do, really, do, do people see in us that sacrificial, that selfless love of Christ abiding within us? Or do people see our own pride, our own ego, our own character? our own selfishness? Does our way of life really inspire people to come and know the love of Christ in their church? I heard a story once that someone was going out into the streets and inviting people to the church to come and gather us to celebrate the Eucharist with us. And then the person responded, if I go, am I going to be like you? And then the person said, yes. And then that one Responded, was like, no way, Jose. I don't want to go there, right? <laughs> if I'm going to be like you, I don't want to be like that. And so I think that that's a challenge that our Lord is asking us to really surrender ourselves, to really die to our own pride, our own ego, to surrender ourselves totally to the will of the Father, for us to totally sacrifice and love and serve those that are around us. And the hope comes that we're not going to do it alone. We cannot do it alone. This is why Jesus comes every single Sunday in the Eucharist. When we consume Him, He gives us the strength and the courage to endure, to persevere, because He knows that love never fails. Look at the cross. He died, but He lives forever. And it is the same love that we're called to imitate. By your love, They'll come to know whether you're a disciple of Christ or not. 